Hello and welcome back Squirrel Nation. I hope you're all having an outstanding day. Two notes before we dive in. One, I have new thumbnail style. The reason for that is my click through rate on my videos are pretty bad. And I think that's because I'm not too great about uh, creating thumbnails um, that provide a lot of value and people just want to click on them. I think I tend to overpopulate them. So I'm trying to do new thumbnails. So please give me feedback on my thumbnails if you have any. Second point is that I am trying a new format. So we tried breaking long videos up into short videos and releasing them different days and then um, all at one burst. And with this video, what I'm going to try to do is I'm going to make it more standalone, but it's going to be a series. So I'm going to release um, the following parts of the series in the next days. Um, however, this is going to all be all all the series is going to be about how to win your ds lane so it's a bunch of tips for ds laners to use to win games okay so it's basically going to be the same thing that the how to roam mid and the how to roam support were but it's going to just be released and formatted slightly differently so please let me know your thoughts um with that said, we can dive into the main chunk of this video. This video in the series is going to be all about the very beginning of the game, the different routines that DS laners can go through to help themselves win games. So there's three main areas. There's going to be how to defend your blue, how to defend your red, and then there's going to be an aggressive opening. Also note that the strategies I'm going to provide start from very basic level to more advanced stuff. So, um... If you find yourself getting bored at the beginning strategies, just hop deeper into the video and you'll probably enjoy them. But anyways, with that said, let's dive in. In this clip, my jungler is starting on the opposite side and I'm simply going to defend and invade. And basically this is what happens. I kind of wait a second, I check these brush. I'm just gonna sit here and watch for enemies. Now I see the enemy jungler start pinging my team. Same thing, see the DS laner. Um, I'm kind of watching the minimap, seeing what other people are doing. I see Zill, I see they're fighting uh, the Grok. Scud does try to come in to poke at my laner, so I come behind him. And now I'm simply just going to mirror Scud back to lane. Um, still watching the minimap. I know that nobody else has snuck into our jungle, so I know our jungle is safe, and I make it in time for the first minion. Another thing I want to point out in this clip is notice the time. That first minion died at about 47 seconds. So you have till 47 seconds to get back to your lane and you won't miss any gold or experience. Okay, so in this clip, once again, my jungler is starting the opposite side, but this time I'm going to check a little differently. Um, either, either way of checking is okay, it just depends. And same thing, I'm gonna clear both these brush because I see the mid lane is already being checked. The mid laner's there, we see Grok rotating over, and then Aram is also coming down, so those three people, we're just kind of defending. I see Grok and Tolan go back to lane, and I saw um, Ar Aram go top, so I just start heading top, and nothing really eventful happens. Same thing, if you notice, it's 43 seconds. By the time I make it to lane, I still get experience. Okay, in this clip, you will notice that the jungler is starting same side as me, and I also am running Punish since I'm playing Xenial, so I just give him a really hard leash, and then I'm going to come out towards mid. Same thing, because if anybody was rotating in from mid or the river, the normal um, uh, stealing paths, I would catch them, and I would give my uh, Quillen enough time to finish the buff. And then also notice I get back to lane once again to get golden experience. Okay, so in this clip, we hop over, we're on red side. Once again, the jungler doesn't start our side, so we go to grab vision down the middle invade path. Once again, we see the enemy. Me and the Grok are here. I just poke at Richter. I don't even know how that hook missed, but it did. And anyways, the enemies are coming. We're just kind of starting a battle. We're poking back and forth. You can see Xenial there. Um, actually, Xenial in this game is our mid laner. The game got weird, don't ask me. Um, so anyways, they're still fighting. I don't really want to fight. I want to get back to lane. If you notice, it's 44, 45. I'm not going to make it for that one minion. Um, Grok does re-engage for some reason. And um, anyway, so that's unfortunate. But he ends up giving over first blood to the enemy team. But the, my, my laner is the Richter, so he is part of that. So I'm pushing the um, wave into the tower. And then also I wanted to kind of catch him. Unfortunately, I didn't get as much damage as I wanted on the Richter. I was hoping to stall him so he would have missed more of that wave to kind of make up for the fact that he just um, got that uh, kill gold. 
Okay, so in this clip, once again, we're on red side. This time I'm gonna check the same bushes and I'm gonna show you a new strategy, which is to basically uh, attempt an invade slash a fake invade. So basically now I'm the one acting like I wanna go into the jungle and see Xana sees me and notice the um, my laner Zebneth uses sprint. You can tell he used sprint. So he actually burned his summoners because I went to look for the invade. And you can tell I wasn't really committed to that invade. Um, that was more just I'm posturing to um, get the enemy team a little bit scared. Yebnith also stays mid because he wanted to get value, I think, for his summoner skill, which means he's going to lose an entire wave to the tower. Once again, I'm positioning myself so that uh, Yebnith doesn't have an easy way back to lane. And you'll see I catch him coming and make him take an even longer route back, and I do try to kind of poke at him. So Yebnith missed an entire wave basically because I decided to fake invade. So that is another very viable strategy if you start on the red side of the map. Okay, last red side video. This I am also going to hard leash my jungler, which is Rourke and Roxy together. So this buff is just going to get melted. Um, I put the fire down, put the smite down. Do turn off your fire quickly so you don't accidentally steal. Notice Rourke, and this happens red side, Rourke is going to not actually clear and go over to his buff. And actually in this case, it's, it's because the enemies are invading. So... When that happens, make sure that you go and pick up the um, small camp, right? Don't waste that experience. So anyways, as soon as I clear that first wave, I come, I get the small camp, and then I will go back to lane. And notice our they did successfully defend Rourke's blue. So our team's starting really good. Um, just, just to really uh, reiterate to you guys, the reason that it's okay for me to kill that small camp there is because Rourke had to rotate all the way to his blue. He's going to end up clearing those small monster camps on blue side. And even if he does decide to come back to red, he would clear that small camp. And the small camp that I just finished is probably already going to respawn. So basically, if I didn't kill it and I just left it up, then my team is leaving experience and gold on the table. Okay, so we covered how to defend blue buff, how to defend red buff, and some different strategies. Now I am going to show you the aggressive invasion start. So basically what I'm going to do is I am going to go and steal the enemy's uh, small camp. You can do this on any of the side laners who have good damage and mo mobility. Um, some of the ones who you don't, you're not confident in getting away with, I would not do it. Because notice, people will come and challenge you. But with Roxy, I'm totally fine taking that fight. Um, you notice I still got the small camp, so everything worked out good. Um, but anyways, other examples are Omen, your Zookas, um, th those type of like damage, split push type um, side laners. They're, they do really good at this strategy also, it's not only Roxy. Um, one example of a hero I wouldn't do this on is Marja. I find it really hard because her kill speed is very slow, so you're going to sit there too long and you're going to miss wave. So if you notice, I actually got the, the monster and I got all the experience from my wave. Um, here you get Vision Seagull, and this is why this works really nice. You get Vision Seagull, you come back, you can clear your wave, and notice I'm watching the Vision Seagull to see if the enemy has cleared the jungle. If he hasn't, I'll go back and steal Red Puff, right? So in this case, the enemy jungler, the Vision Seagull just showed me has cleared his red, so there's no reason for me to go into the jungle. Okay, so this is a very similar start, uh, going for the invade uh, on the small camp first. But there's going to be a little different thing, which is that this is also contested. I still get the small camp, but I do not get the vision seagull. Um, Wonder Woman is actually able to steal it from me. I punished there because I saw that Wonder Woman was coming and I didn't want to lose it. So anyways, we are brawling out a little bit more. If you notice, once again, I make it close enough to get the golden experience from my full wave. So we're just kind of brawling it out. I'm going to do the wave and then I'm going to do the vision seagull like you have been seeing. So anyways, wave starting the Vision Seagull. Like I said, the Wonder Woman is going to steal this Vision Seagull from me. The reason I want to show you that is because, remember, this Vision Seagull is important because it checks the enemy jungle. Because I don't have any vision on the enemy jungle, I want to go see if the enemy jungler has done that buff or not. If they haven't, I will try to steal it, and if they have, then I'll just kind of get out of there. So in this case, you notice I come and Xanus has just finished the buff, unfortunately. And the other great thing, once again, Roxy. And that's why I like heroes who can get away. They can't really be chased well because you can just get out. Really, uh, no, no danger whatsoever of me dying. So anyways, make it back for the next wave. Um, a big point in all of these is notice I'm not missing um, wave experience or gold. 
to do any of these actions. That's how you roam effectively. Uh, very quick roams, but they provide high value. Okay, so here's a different pattern. I'm going to go seagull, wave, and then jungle uh, small camp. So the benefit of this, so the pro is that if you kill the seagull first, it's going to check the jungle for you and you're gonna know what side the enemy jungler started on. So for instance, you see my support bot lane has not gone to check the jungle to see where he started. So this is the benefit of this opening and note now you're going to notice that the red buff is still up which means the enemy jungler started blue buff um, another thing a few notes to be aware of is notice i use punish on the vision seagull you have to be more careful when you kill the seagull because the ds laner will be right there watching you but kind of the other pro is it's a lot safer because you're not getting as deep in enemy territory and then also you are um you're, you're at no risk for missing lane, uh, lane experience or uh, gold. But anyway, so then I come in to take the camp, but here's the other risk you run is that the enemy jungler just finished red, so they're obviously, they probably went to mid, but they could have been there to contest me for that small camp with Arthur. So that's another thing to be aware of um, in this strategy. To me, I don't really look at it as a one's worse or better, they just have different utilities. So once again, if your support is not going to scout the enemy jungle, it's a good idea to get the vision seagull early so you know what side the enemy jungler is on. If your um, support's doing their job and checking the jungle to see where the enemy is starting, then I would start by going for the small camp first because it's going to just add you um, more, more benefit to your team basically. Okay, final clip. Um, in this case, the nobody contests me. I simply walk in and then I take the small camp because the enemy laner doesn't even try to contest me. And notice where I'm standing, uh, the, small, the minion wave won't see you as long as you stay on the edge. But then since the enemy laner is not even contesting me, I'm like, okay, cool, I'll come take red buff also because the jungler started on the other side. So um, there's a couple lessons to be taken out of this. One, be as greedy as you can without dying. So in this case, I had no chance of dying. Um, nobody had vision on me. They didn't even try to come. And even if they did, it would have just been a 1v1 because, uh, yeah. And then, and then I even get the vision seagull here. And the other note is to Virus, she should have had a huge red flags going off in her head that I hadn't been to uh, the lane for the first wave. And something I want to point out to you is if you notice right now, I'm level three, she's level two, even though I missed an entire wave because I got the entire, uh, because I got the red buff and a small camp. So that red buff and a small camp is worth a lot more than one wave. So um, to those of you who are afraid to lose waves to your tower, you have to ask yourself, what am I trading for this wave? So if you're trading a red buff or a blue buff for a one wave, it's worth it, right? Because you are really negatively impacting the enemy jungle and you're also getting a good, like a really good amount of experience and a little less gold. But anyways, that is the other opening.